In this video, we're going to talk about dispersion strengthening or dispersion strengthened alloys. Let's start by considering a couple of examples. Both iron and nickel are commonly used as dispersion strengthened alloy matrix materials. In many cases, the dispersion phase is either alumina or yttria. And so these are often called oxide dispersion strengthened alloys, or ODS for short. These are used in applications that require high temperatures, so for example, nuclear reactors or turbine blades. And the reason why ODS alloys work better in these cases than precipitation strengthened materials is that because the uh, strengthening phase is an entirely different phase, the particles remain stable at high temperature. Whereas if we used a precipitation strengthened alloy at a high temperature, the precipitate particles might redissolve back into solution. So let's consider that we have two particles which the dislocation cannot cut through. So this is either because they are an entirely different second phase or because they are um, large and it's energetically not favorable for the dislocation to cut through them. So we have our two particles here and we have a dislocation line which is moving along toward the particles. Uh, our particle spacing we're going to call L and our particle radius is R and so that leaves this distance here to be L minus 2R. So the dislocation line is moving along, moving over here, and when it encounters the particles, it doesn't cut through them, but it does want to keep moving. So instead what happens is that the dislocation starts to sort of pass the particles by, but the dislocation line is being held up by the particles. And this reminds us a little bit actually of the Frank Reed source, right? And so the dislocation keeps going. And what we end up with is a dislocation loop around the particle and a straight dislocation line, which can keep moving. So then if another dislocation were to come along, it would interact first with the dislocation loop also with the particle and would keep going. So this really slows down the dislocations as they are moving along. And the strength that we get from this bowing mechanism, so this is called bowing, is uh, a function of the shear modulus, the Berger's vector, and the effective particle spacing. So let's just consider then the effectiveness of this strengthening mechanism as a function of particle radius, right? So we see that the radius is in the denominator here. And so as the particles get bigger, this becomes less effective as a strengthening mechanism. So small particles, which are spaced closely together is better. And We'll call this F1. This is some particular volume fraction. If we have a higher volume fraction of particles, we also see more strengthening as compared to the first, because for any given radius, then the particles would be closer together. And uh, the closer together the particles are, the more effective the strengthening is, right? So L is telling us how close they are. When they get closer together, uh, the strengthening is more effective because it's harder for the dislocation to do this bowing process. So let's consider then the transition that might occur from particles being cut to dislocations bowing in the case of precipitate particles which could in fact be cut if the radius were small enough. 
So let's look at this cutting to bowing transition. So as a reminder for dislocation cutting, which we talked about in the solid solution strengthening video, the strength is proportional to the square root of r, the particle radius. And so we saw that the strength increased as the particles got bigger. All right, so, so this is shown here in purple. And in the case of dislocation bowing, we just saw that this is sort of inversely proportional to r. And so this takes on a different behavior, and, and we have something like this. And so this is bowing, and this one is cutting. And again, this transition is for a precipitate particle. If we have a different phase altogether, then the cutting isn't ever possible. But we then see sort of some composite strengthening, right? Because whichever mechanism is easier is the one that's going to happen. And so we sort of end up with this uh, blue curve here, right? And so we find there's some optimal radius, which leads to the maximum strengthening possible. And in many cases, this optimal radius is usually on the order of 10 to 100 nanometers. So if you're operating uh, sort of in, in this range below the optimum radius, you could increase the strength by continuing an aging process. If you have missed this maximum and are now moving down here, the material is said to be underaged, overaged rather. So this is the second mechanism by which dislocations can interact with particles in order to strengthen the material.